when we were freshmen at Fort Lewis College together. Caprice and I attended Skyline High School together. When they asked me to officiate their wedding, I was at first honored and then humbled. I can think of few things as important as marrying two friends and contributing to their wedding in such a critical manner. Before writing this, I met with Tim and Caprice and asked them any questions to get a feel for what to say this day. What affected me most was their story of how they first met on the dance floor. The pure joy and happiness I saw in each one of your eyes while you were relating this story to me, I will never forget. And I urge you both to remember it daily. 
For it is that joy, three years past, that brings us here today. For some years I've been traveling from place to place with all the belongings on my back. And over these past few years, I have not only seen Caprice teach Tim how to wash a dish, a task which I failed miserably when we lived together our sophomore year of university, but I've also come by some things that have made my life's ripples a bit smoother. And may they help you guys as well. First, always make sure your road map is handy. It's always nice to know how far you have come and what possibilities lie in front of you. A destination is only one of an infinitude of short stops along the way. You will now be each other's greatest ally on the long journey to and from these destinations. Secondly, remember that the only constant in life is that things change. Anne Morrow Lindbergh once wrote that when you love someone, you do not love them all the time in exactly the same way from moment to moment. It is an impossibility. It is, an even, it is even a lie to pretend to. We leap at the flow of the tide and resist in terror its ebb. We are afraid it will never return. We insist on permanency, on duration, on continuity. When the only continuity possible is in, in possible in life as in love, is in growth, in fluidity, in freedom, in the sense that dancers are free, touching as they pass, but partners in the same pattern. Thirdly, always know how to ask where the bathroom is in the local language. I'm not sure exactly how this applies to the both of you, but I assure you indeed it is very important. Fourth, trust. Trust and love are the bedrock of marriage. I hope Keith doesn't mind me quoting him, for he said it best. For trust costs nothing to obtain, and I can't tell you how quickly or in what quantity you accrue it, but I can say that no amount of money can buy it back when it's gone. The only thing I would like to add to that is that the medium through which trust is accrued is through communication. Never let a day go by without saying I love you. Lastly, always have a clean pair of socks in your pack. Life's milestones are very often marked by distress. Problems will arise, and each one that the two of you put asunder will be like a rivet holding your marriage together even stronger. Walking around in dirty socks is like walking around with unspoken tensions between you and your loved one. Be open, be honest with each other, so you never find yourselves walking around in dirty socks. Tim and Caprice have decided to arrange and present their vows to each other today. Hello, everybody. <laughs> I vow to keep a calm head in times of turmoil. I vow to be a sense of stability in a hectic world. I vow to treat you with love and respect. I vow to always put the toilet seat down, <laughs> to fill the ice cream trays, and to take out the trash. Okay. I want you to know that you and Colton have become my whole life, giving me drive and purpose. You are emotionally supportive, and you make me feel like I am an amazing friend lover and father. I hope that I can return <clears throat> this incredible feeling that you give me. You're my sunshine. I vow to be your shelter from the sun. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Tim, I vow to think of you every hour, to kiss you every day, to dream with you every night. Robert Frost once said, it is irresistibly desirable to be irresistibly desired. I read this quote out of the book, The Secret. Tim, I vow to read The Secret at least <laughs> once a year about our whole marriage. I love you.
Do we have the rings? The ring is an outward sign of an inward and spiritual bond which unites two loyal hearts in endless love. The circle is a perfect figure, without beginning, without end. It is a symbol of the cycle of life, of birth, death, and rebirth. These rings shall serve as a physical reminder of your vows to each other this day, and that all things begin, end, and begin again. When you are engulfed in anger or in sadness, look to your hand and remember that the wheel turns forever onward, and it is love that turns that wheel. Do you, Timothy, Damien Kempter, take Caprice Nadine Henderson to be your lawfully wedded wife? Yes, I do. I really, really do. <laughs> <laughs> and do you, Caprice Nadine Henderson, take Timothy Damien Kempter to be your husband? I do. By the power vested in me, I now pronounce you man and wife. Tim, you may kiss the bride. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Timothy Kemper.